Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today what we have for you is an introduction to a new tool to handle doing the press work on Toyota rear axles. This tool can handle the press work for virtually any Toyota SUV or truck rear axle. Forerunners, Tacomas, Tundras, FJ Cruisers, the older Hiluxes, older pickups. It can pretty much handle any Toyota model you have. We've already performed this job on a ABS rear end and a non-ABS rear end for a third generation Toyota 4Runner. The reason why we're introducing this new tool is for a couple reasons. Number one, the original tool we used has some problems with the manufacturing. Several people have commented on the video in the recent past and said there are some problems with it. I contacted the company and they didn't get back to me and let me know that they acknowledged the problem and that they would fix it. I tried twice to get a hold of them and they blew me off. That's the first reason why we sought a new tool for this job. The second reason why we're introducing you to this new tool is because it's way more functional than the original tool we used in those videos. This new tool right here actually saves you money and saves you time and we'll describe those benefits as we're doing the work. The three tools you see here, the main arm, the ABS tone ring puller, and the bearing driver will handle first, second, and third gen forerunners first and second gen Tacomas, first generation Tundras, T100s, and Hilux 2004 to 2012 models, and most older Hilux models too, and older pickups. If you have a fourth or fifth gen 4Runner, a second gen Tacoma, a third gen Tacoma, a first or second gen Sequoia, or any year FJ Cruiser, what you will need is this wheel bearing puller adapter to go with the main support arm and the ABS tone ring puller to do those models that I mentioned. I mentioned how this new kit can save you time and money. The way it saves you time is with this ABS tone ring puller, you only have to knock out one of the axle studs to slide this in place under the ABS tone ring. With the original video, we had to knock all four studs out in order to get a bearing splitter underneath the tone ring to capture it. And this bearing splitter would marry up to the old tool we used originally. So since this ABS tone ring puller takes the place of the bearing splitter, it saves you money because now you don't have to buy yourself a bearing splitter if you don't already own one. With the original tool, we used a press sleeve that's part of this kit to help drive the parts back onto the axle. We put the press sleeve on top of the old tool and used it to drive the retainer and the bearing into position onto the axle and then also used it to drive the other retainer and ABS tone ring onto the axle. So with this bearing driver that you can buy with the kit, it takes the place of the press sleeve and you don't need to buy this kit. This press sleeve kit is very functional and you could use it to press out bushings and do other wheel bearings like your front wheel bearings. But for the purposes of this job, because you can get this as part of the puller press kit, you don't need this press sleeve kit to accomplish the job. This replaces it. Instead of buying an axle tool, a bearing splitter, and a press sleeve kit in order to get this job done, you can go to this eBay seller and get everything you need as a one-stop shop to do the job. So you might be wondering, who's the guy that makes this very functional tool? The guy's name is Dwayne, and he has a history in manufacturing engineering. He actually got a manufacturing engineering technology degree from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. While he was going to college, he worked as a maintenance technician at various factories doing all kinds of different things like mechanical repair, machining, plumbing, electrical diagnosis, welding, and doing press work. After he graduated, he spent 30 years in manufacturing management and then recently retired. He started an eBay store, originally selling parts for Mini Cooper suspension. And then he found the need to make a bearing puller for his son's Toyota truck. He first made one out of an old axle and then he thought he could improve on the design 
and started manufacturing this new and improved model you see here. I contacted Dwayne because I was looking for an alternative for an axle tool to do this job since the old tool had manufacturing problems. He sent me one of his tools and Sean and I used it for an axle seal job and were very impressed with how well it worked and how functional it was. Another thing about Dwayne's tool is he stands behind it 100%. If you have a problem with it or you're able to actually break it, he'll replace it at no cost. In this video, we're gonna focus just on the press work for the axles using this new tool. We're not gonna show the removal of the axles, the insertion of the seals, and getting the axles all back together because we already show all that detail in two different videos, an ABS one and a non-ABS one. You can click on the links above and see those videos to get further detail to do the whole job. So now we're gonna get started with the press work and we're gonna show you how well this tool works. All right, so you've got your axles out of the rear end. Now it's time to do the press work. What we found is a nice stand to use on your workbench is an old rotor. I actually got this from my 98 rig. I did the Tundra brake upgrade and I had these left over. You take your axle, you line up the studs and you slide it in. So now you have a nice platform without the studs digging into your workbench. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the ABS tone ring and the inner retainer. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use the special ABS tool and slide it underneath. Because of the way he manufactured this with an opening, a U-shaped, all we have to do is knock one stud out to where we can slide it in place. The stud that we found is easiest for us to knock out and then get underneath and get our fingers on it is this one right here. If you look at how the bell crank is facing, it's the one right opposite it. So what we do is we grab one of our 14 millimeter nuts that came off the rig. We screw that down to where it's even with the top of the studs. And this is to protect the threads as we're hammering this stud out. These bolts are serration bolts, so there's a serrated section that slides into this bearing retainer. You can use a regular hammer, but I choose to use a brass hammer because it's softer than the steel, so it's not going to mar up the stud, it's going to mar up the hammer. You just give it some firm blows and drive the stud out of the bearing case. Now that it's out, you can unscrew the nut and then get your fingers underneath there and capture the stud and then you can just bring it out. I just use both my index fingers to capture it to bring it out. And you can see the serrations on the end of the stud there. Now that we have that stud removed, we can get our special ABS tool in position. We grab the main arm of the tool and we slide it up over the top of the shaft. Now we grab the four supplied thick flat washers and we put those over the studs. Then we grab the four nuts that go with the ABS puller and we put those on. So now what you have to do is you got to pick this up, you got to use your man strength and you got to bring this over to your press. The press that we're using for this job is a 20 ton Harbor Freight press. You could pick this up for anywhere from about 150 bucks to $200, which would be the full price if you got no deal, no discount, not on sale. The press comes with these two plates, which is pretty nice because then you don't have to actually buy these separately. So they come with the kit. Right now, we have the cross member of the press at the highest point right now. You have these pins and you have all these different holes you can choose from. So we have these pins at the uppermost holes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to slide the axle assembly underneath the arms and I have the tool oriented to where when we lower this cross member down that the tool is going to fit between the cross member. If you're by yourself, it's going to be a little bit trickier. You're going to have to go down a little bit at a time 
and then go to the other side, lower that down, and you're gonna slowly seesaw it down into position. Ideally, you have a friend helping you, so one person grabs this side and that pin, the other person grabs the other side and this pin, and then you slowly lower it down to the position you need. The position that we found works well with this tool is the fourth hole down. So we have to drop this assembly down three holes. On the edges of this cross member, there's actual little handle that you can grab onto. We're taking the pressure off the pin, we're pulling it out, we're gonna drop it down to the fourth position, and then we're gonna slide it right over the axle. I'm gonna draw the axle up through here, and we're gonna capture it with these plates. What we found works well is this big notch making like a triangle. That's how we're gonna capture the pipe of the tool. With the press plates pushed to the far sides, I'm gonna lift up the assembly, and then I'm gonna press one plate underneath, the other plate underneath, and now it's captured by the plates. The reason why we're on the fourth position is because we already know this is the position we need to be in for this to work with this Harbor Freight press. We couldn't go up one more notch because then the axle would be already hitting this. So we have to be down at the fourth position. This bottle jack has a bar screw that you can screw out quite a ways, several inches, to where you can get more distance with this jack. You have these springs creating resistance. If you're by yourself, you can put some weight into it and slowly screw this out. And it's a little difficult doing it by yourself because you have to pull down while screwing. If you have a buddy helping you, then what I can do is I can pull down and then he screws it out for me and then it's a lot easier with a friend helping you do this. This bar screw is now completely locked out. It doesn't screw out any further than this, but you can see how much you gain from screwing it out. Now what you wanna do is you wanna turn the screw on your hydraulic bottle jack to lock it in place so you can now jack it downward. So now we wanna bring the press down lower, closer to the axle, Make sure it's nice and centered before we start applying force to drive the parts off. What I learned from my buddy Mark, you can do this quickly by just getting your finger in here and just bringing it down really fast instead of using the actual bar. So get down here and look and get it pretty close to where it's gonna touch. Now you can do your final adjustment, get it nice and centered underneath the press and then you can bring it down to where it touches down. Before you start doing your press work, it's nice to put some type of crash pad underneath here because the whole assembly is gonna drop down when we get the ABS tone ring and inner retainer free. And then when we press the axle out of the bearing, the axle is gonna be coming crashing down on here too. So we have this foam pad. You can use a moving blanket, whatever you got, just to protect the axle and your brake components from slamming into the ground. Now we're gonna get our bar into the bottle jack to give us more leverage. So you insert the handle into the press and start jacking it down. What you just heard was a little bit of pressure releasing. And after you hear something like that, the rest of the press work is gonna go nice and smooth. And you just saw what I was talking about. The whole assembly dropped down into our nice crash pad. Now what we wanna do is release pressure on the bottle jack so it slides back up. Another thing we wanna do is reduce the bar screw and screw it all the way back into the bottle jack to give us more room to lift the assembly up and get it off the press. Again, it's easier to accomplish this with the help of a friend. Now we want to lift up the cross member back up to the very top and put our pins in the top holes. As you see, that almost cleared it to where we can get the axle out. I'm going to pull these press plates out of the way. At the same time holding this up a little bit, I can tilt the axle and pull it out just like this. So now that you can see that the ABS tone ring and the inner retainer are off the axle. So we have our main tool with the ABS puller back on our workbench. I'm gonna loosen these nuts, take the washers off. 
We pull it off and voila, here is your inner retainer and here's your ABS tone ring. If you clean off the surface of the inner retainer, you can see a mark on it. It's a mark that's shinier than the rest of the retainer and that's where the seal was originally writing. Right at the tip of this little plastic tool is a shiny mark on the retainer. So the old seal was pretty much writing dead center on this 10 millimeter polished surface of the retainer. This is the bevel that you obviously don't want your seal writing on. And this is something we discuss in great detail of why axle seals fail because the seal ends up writing on the bevel, not on the machined polished surface where we want it to be writing. So now we're gonna grab our axle and we're gonna put it back on our nice little rotor stand here. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna grab that serrated bolt and draw it back into the bearing case. Fish it through underneath. And you could pretty much do this successfully blindly if you have enough dexterity in your fingers there. Slide it up. In order to draw the bolt into the bearing case, we need to take up some distance. So I'm gonna do that with four washers and slide them over. These don't come with the kit. You could just get washers at any hardware store. No big deal. If you try to draw this in without the washers, eventually this nut is gonna come in contact with the spot that has no threads, and that's why you need the washers. So you put four washers on there, and you put your OEM 14 millimeter nut on. If you look right here, you can see the space that we have to make up for with the washers. There's no threads there. So you grab a 14 millimeter socket. I'm using a deep 14 millimeter socket with a 3 8 drive, and we're just gonna tighten this down. Hold it steady and slowly draw that bolt into position. If you had a buddy helping you, he can put both hands on here to stabilize it and then you could just work the ratchet. When it gets really tight, that means that the stud is bottomed out on the underside and now you can loosen it. Again, you have to hold some pressure to loosen it. And now you could just unscrew the nut and get your washers out of the way. You can determine that you pulled it back in fully just by comparing it to the other studs. Another thing is if you look on the back side, you can see that the head of the stud is fully sucked up to the inside of the backing plate, letting you know that you've got it fully seated. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this retaining clip off the axle. The purpose of the retaining clip is to keep the outer retainer and the bearing in place on the axle. What you use to get it off is some type of snap ring pliers. I have these ones by Nipix. It usually works pretty good to get onto the edges of the clip. You can see that the edges of this clip are pretty fine and small, so it is a little bit of a test of patience. You're gonna start grabbing it and it's gonna slip off, and then you're gonna try it again, it's gonna slip off. But what you wanna do is if you get a little bit of real estate here, as you start to pry it up, you wanna maintain what you got by sticking something in between the axle and the clip. As I start to pry out on this, if I start to give a little gap, I'm gonna get my screwdriver between there to hold it to where I don't lose it. See, now I can let go with the tool and I didn't lose what I gained. Ultimately, you wanna spread it enough to where it gets out of its groove and you can slide it up the axle. I'm gonna get a bigger screwdriver in here now to maintain the distance I got. Once you got a medium sized screwdriver in there, you can twist it a little bit, get a little more distance, get a bigger screwdriver in there, and then you can twist that one and hopefully get it out a little more. What you wanna be careful is you wanna protect the face of this retainer because we're gonna reuse it. So you don't wanna mar it up. With the blade of the screwdriver canted, I'm gonna now lever it against the axle and see if I could pull it out. Like so. If you scratch up this surface, no big deal. You just don't wanna scratch up the surface of the retainer because this retainer we're gonna reuse to mate with the axle seal. What makes this clip a little bit difficult to remove is that there's not a whole lot of edge to get on there with your snap ring pliers. This one works pretty good, but as you expand it out, 
the tips want to slide off of here to where you can expand it wide enough to slide it up the shaft of the axle. We used a different technique of first getting a little bit of a gap with the tool to get a little screwdriver between the clip and the axle. And then we graduated to a bigger screwdriver and twisted that a little bit to get a little bit more of a gap. And then eventually went to this bigger flat blade screwdriver to where we can twist it against the face and then finally lever it off. In a perfect world, if you were able to get a very solid grip on the ends of these, you can expand this thing out wide enough to where you can just slide it up the shaft. But it's easier said than done. So that's why we wanted to show you the flat blade screwdriver technique in case you find that your snap ring pliers are slipping off the snap ring and just giving you a hard time. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the main tool and we're going to slide it over the axle shaft. So you might notice when you first slide the tool over, you might not be seeing quite enough threads to get a good bite with the nuts, with the washer. The reason for that is because as you pounded out that stud, the bearing slid in the bearing case. This bearing is not a press fit at all in the bearing case. So as I was pounding down, this bearing slid up a little bit in the bearing case. And there's an easy fix for this. All I have to do is pick up the axle and I just pop the axle shaft into a piece of wood or whatever you have. Just a tiny little tap. Then when you bring it back up to your workbench, you'll see that the bearing recessed further into the bearing case. Now when we slide the tool back over, we have more stud available. Now we grab our thick flat washers and we slide those over the studs. Then we grab our four 14 millimeter flange nuts and install those on the studs. With our deep 14 millimeter socket and a 3 8 ratchet, we're gonna tighten these nuts down. They don't have to be super tight. Just snug them down to where you have the maximum amount of threads being grabbed by the 14 millimeter nuts. Now we have to bring this assembly back over to our press. So we're going to use the same technique as we did before. We're going to start with the cross member at the very top. We're going to slide our axle underneath to where the tool is oriented to where it will slide through this cross member. And then now we're going to drop the cross member down to the fourth hole again. Again, you want the press plates to the far edges. I'm going to lift up and get this in place. Same as before, we're going to utilize the bar screw to get a little more distance. This is important because you have to drive this axle pretty far to get it free of the bearing. So we want to maximize the amount of travel we can have with the press. So I'm going to pull down on it and Sean is going to screw the bar screw out as far as he can and we're going to get this really close to the face of the axle. So I'm pulling down and he's going to screw the bar out. So you can see how close we have the press to the face of the axle. Now we're going to tighten this screw so we can start the pressing. Again, I'm going to start with just my finger, get it close to the axle face, and then recenter it, make sure it's nice and center, and then I'm going to bring it down to where it touches. So now that's touched down. Now I'm going to get my bar into the bottle jack so I have more leverage. Here's the point where you reevaluate and make sure that you got that C-clip off the axle first because if you forget removing that C-clip, that C-clip will hold a tremendous amount of force. If you find that you're pressing and pressing and nothing's happening, that means that you might have forgot that. So stop and reevaluate. Pressing the axle through the bearing takes more force than to get the ABS tone ring and inner retainer off. So you're going to feel it build up pressure, build up pressure, and then it's finally going to pop free. You might hear a loud noise, so be prepared for that. Don't get scared. So that loud noise you heard was the initial breaking free of the 
axle from the bearing. Now the rest of the press work should go nice and smooth. And as you saw there, the axle finally dropped out, letting us know that the axle is fully out of the bearing. The next thing we want to do is release pressure on the bottle jack and have it go back up. And then we want to screw the bar screw back in. Like before, we're going to raise the cross member back up to the top position. And then I should be able just to lift up this assembly and pull the axle out. Now the axle's free. Now we'll just grab underneath, support the weight, pull our press plates out of the way, and then fit this down underneath. Now we have the tool and the backing plate free. So now we're gonna get our tool off the backing plate. You just grab your 14 millimeter socket and 3H drive ratchet and loosen up all the nuts. and then you pull your tool off. Now you have your axle free of the bearing and you have the outer retainer free. What I wanna to talk to you about now is how you can save a decent amount of money with this repair. The way you can reuse both these retainers is you swap the positions. This original one that was mating with the seal has a witness mark on it. And this one that was a placeholder for the bearing has no marks on it. We're gonna put the one with the witness mark to mate with the new bearing, and we're gonna put this nice one with no marks on it to mate up with the new axle seal, and that's how you can reuse the two retainers. The other thing that you can reuse is this ABS tone ring. This is just a hunk of metal that the magnetic ABS sensor takes a reading off of. Unless you cut the part off, you can reuse this. That's why we pull the parts off rather than cut them off because these ABS tone rings are quite expensive. These two retainers and this ABS tone ring total will save you $150 online pricing. If you bought them straight from the dealership, you're talking even more money. So a pretty significant savings by reusing these parts. So now we're gonna flip this assembly over. If you're doing it on a workbench, you want the bell crank hanging off the side so it sits flat. So we're just gonna rest it on the workbench on these four studs. We're gonna pull this dust seal out. We're just gonna grab a pair of pliers and you could just pull up. If you just put some weight on it and pull up, you can just pop it out just like that. It's not in there very tight at all. This bearing is not a press fit into this bearing case. It actually fits in there quite loosely. To get this out, what we're gonna utilize is the press sleeve that comes with the kit. We're gonna put that against the inner race. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get something that we can strike against. I have this four inch by four inch, half inch steel plate. I actually bought this on Amazon, but if you go to any fabrication shop, they can probably cut you a piece of stock. This is nice to where you can tap evenly right in the center. If you didn't have something like this, then you can see with your hammer, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna to have to slowly tap around the outside and you can maybe get the bearing going out crooked. Get yourself some type of plate. I'll put a link in the video description for this plate that I actually bought on Amazon if you wanna purchase the same plate as I did. So utilizing my brass hammer, I'm just gonna tap right in the center and just pop it out. And you're gonna see that it doesn't take a lot of force. I'm barely tapping on this, very little force. And that's it. You take this off, and now your bearing is out. Grab a clean rag and clean out this inner bore of the bearing case. I like to pre-lubricate this inner bore with some grease to where it makes the insertion of the new bearing easier. So I just put a little bit on my finger and smear it around the outside. This is just a multi-purpose red grease. It's actually called Red Devil. But you can use any type of bearing grease that you want. It doesn't really matter. This is just to aid with insertion of the new bearing. So that's nice and lubricated. I'm also gonna put some grease on the outer race. That's got a nice layer of grease on it. And then for right now, I'm just gonna 
gently put that on top and we're gonna bring this back over to our press. What I'm showing you here is the setup that's gonna be underneath. When we actually get the bearing in, I'm gonna flip this over, but I wanted to show you the orientation. I have the four inch by four inch, half inch steel plate sitting right over the hole of the bearing case. Then I'm taking the bearing driver that comes with the kit and I'm putting that in the center. So that's what's supporting this backing plate while we get the bearing driven into the bearing case. We have one press plate in the center. We're gonna put our bearing driver and we're gonna put the four inch plate on top of it. Then we're gonna bring the backing plate and center that. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna get the bearing in as even as possible to start with. I got my head down here level with the face. I'm looking at it and it looks very, very square. That's the first trick to getting this bearing in really easily. What I'm gonna use to drive the bearing into the bearing case is this plastic three inch clean out. This is actually for sewer systems. So this is an ABS three inch clean out with a cap. Right now we have our cross member at the second notch. This cap isn't gonna fit in there so we're gonna go down to the third notch. So the reason why I chose this ABS three inch clean out is for two reasons. Number one, the diameter of this clean out mates up perfectly with the outer race. The reason why I wanna be putting pressure on the outer race is that's how you can protect the bearing. If you put pressure on the inner race, you can actually damage the bearing that way. The other reason why it's good to use this plastic clean out is if I start to see the press load up and actually start to bend this cap and actually start to drive it inward, that lets me know that the bearing isn't going in square and I should stop and reset. If you start to drive the bearing in crooked, it could get really stuck in there and then it's gonna be a difficult time getting it driven in all the way. So this gives me a little bit of a visual indicator if it's going in nice and square. Now we're gonna use the bar screw to get the press closer to the clean out. So I'm gonna pull down and he's gonna screw it out. We're gonna tighten up the hydraulic screw and then I'm just gonna use my finger to bring this thing down. Now that I have the press close to the ABS clean out, I'm just gonna recenter it, make sure it looks good. And then I'm just gonna use my finger to drive this down. What you just saw is the weight of the ABS clean out pushing the bearing in. So obviously I had the bearing in very, very square and you might find that that will happen, that you can literally insert it with your hand. But I'm just gonna keep on coming down and I'm just gonna use my finger strength and just make sure the bearing goes all the way fully seated. When I feel resistance, that means it's all the way seated. You release the bottle jack, you take your ABS clean out out, and now you can see that the bearing is fully seated in the bearing case. The next thing that we're gonna get installed is this dust seal. You can see that it has this step down lip, and this is the side that goes into the bearing case. I like to use grease to help with the insertion, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the same red grease around the inner bore here. And then just utilizing your hands, you can push this in place. You just work it around the edges and looking down to make sure that there's no gap between the seal and the face of the bearing case. And that's all there is to it. There is a little lip right here that's gonna end up riding on the axle. So we're gonna put a little bit of red grease on that too. So we got our rotor stand back up on the bench. We're gonna put the axle in here. We cleaned up this whole axle really good with some brake cleaner. So see this lip here? This is where the inner race of the bearing bottoms out onto. The bearing's gonna be sitting in this location and then right above it is the outer retainer. And then this is the groove that the snap ring goes into to hold the bearing and the outer retainer in place. To enhance the insertion of the bearing onto the axle, I'm gonna 
put some grease on here it's the same grease I've been using and because the widest section of the axle goes from this step all the way up to here I'm actually going to put grease on this section too to where the retainer and the bearing could slide in much easier also to make the insertion easier I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the inside of the inner race what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lift this over the top and slide it onto the axle. You want to slide it onto the axle gently because as you saw, this bearing is not a press fit at all into this bearing case and you could displace it if you're kind of rough with it. I'm going to slide this up over the top and then just bring it down really gently to where it's now resting on the widest section of the axle. Like I said earlier, we're gonna reuse these retainers. I'm using the retainer that originally was mating up with the seal. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the inner bore. And I'm gonna slide this retainer over the top with the bevel facing up. Now we're gonna bring this whole assembly back over to our press. We're starting off with the press cross member pretty low. It's on the second to the last notch. I'm gonna get the tool onto the cross member. I have to go from underneath, fit it in, and then just rest it there for right now. Now I'm gonna grab my bearing driver that comes with the kit, and I'm gonna slide it over the axle in this orientation. You want the long side facing the retainer and the short side facing the main tool. Now I'm going to pick up the assembly, I'm going to tilt it downward, and I'm going to slide it into the main arm. And just let the assembly now come down and meet up with the main arm. Now we need to pick up the cross member back up high to where we can do the press work. Before we bring the cross member up, we're going to screw this bar screw back all the way in. So now we're going to lift the cross member up. We lifted the cross member up to the third hole, and now we have to get our press plates back in position underneath the arm. So I'm gonna put one on each side. I'm gonna lift up, twist the assembly, and then capture the tool. We're now gonna utilize our four inch by four inch plate, and we're gonna put that on top of the axle. If you didn't have this plate, you can use a big impact socket, something that you can drive against and fits the inner bore of the end of this axle face. We just like to use this half inch steel plate. It works nicely. So here's our setup. We have our pins on the third notch supporting the press cross member. We have the press plates that come with the Harbor Freight press capturing the tool. We have the bearing driver on top of the tool meeting up with the outer retainer. So you just want to make sure that the bearing driver is very square with the retainer. So as we're driving down force onto this plate, it's going to push the axle into the bearing and push the outer retainer onto the axle shaft and bring everything together. When you meet significant resistance, that means you're done with the press work. So it's gonna go smooth, 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 and finally it's gonna bottom out and everything's gonna get firm and you'll know you're done. We wanna start with the press really close to what we're pressing. So again, I'm gonna pull down and Sean's gonna screw out the bar screw. I'm gonna make sure everything looks very center. I wanna be driving force on the center of the axle. I'm going to tighten the screw on the bottle jack and then now I'm just going to utilize my finger and bring the press down in contact with the plate. All right, now I'm going to utilize my bar and do the rest of the press work. This should go very smoothly. If you meet significant resistance right away, something's not right. This should go very, very nice and smooth. Okay, everything got really firm. That lets me know that the bearing is fully seated 
and the outer retainer is fully seated against the bearing. I'll release pressure on the bottle jack and we'll get this off the press. To give us more room, we're gonna screw the bar screw back in. We're gonna lower the cross member back down lower so we can pull the assembly up and out of the crossbars. And then now we'll bring this back to our bench. A second confirmation that you know you've got everything seated fully is you'll now see the snap ring groove sitting right above the outer retainer. Getting the snap ring in place is a lot easier than getting it off. I'm just using these snap ring pliers. I'll actually put a link in the video description to this set. You get it on there, you slide it up over the top, and here's where you start to have to expand it to get it in place. I utilize my fingers on the back end, the tool on the front end, and I slowly use the tool to expand it and push down at the same time with my fingers. Bring it down to where it's close, and then you can just kind of push it in place. When you see it snap in and it's fully recessed into the groove, you're done. I'm now gonna smear some more grease on the surface of the axle to aid in insertion of the ABS tone ring and the inner retainer. So I'm just gonna smear some more grease on here. I'm gonna get my ABS tone ring and I'm gonna smear a little bit of grease on the inside bore here. And I'm gonna slide this over the top. It goes this side facing down, this side facing up, facing the third member. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the inner retainer in place. Same thing, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the inner bore. Now here's where we use the Dr. Coffee method. We learned this from T4R.org. I'm not going to go into the history of why we do this because you can find that out if you watch the first video. But we are going to flip the orientation with the bevel facing the tone ring. Like so. Now we're going to bring this back to our press and we're going to press these into the proper position. We're going to drop the axle in the same orientation that we just showed you with getting the axle driven into the bearing. The purpose of this little notch is it's a little window for you to see how far you need to press the ABS tone ring and the inner retainer on. What we have figured out is when we have five millimeters of polished axle showing above the inner retainer, that's pretty much the sweet spot to where when you insert the axle into the rear end, that inner axle seal is going to be sitting pretty much dead center on the polished surface of that retainer. What we use as a gauge is a five millimeter Allen wrench. As we're pressing down and we're seeing polished axles start to show up, we're taking a reading with this five millimeter Allen wrench and when the amount of polished axle showing is equal to the width of our five millimeter Allen wrench, we know we're done pressing. We have the cross member on the second to the last notch. We have the bearing driver sitting on top of the main tool. I'm gonna to slide the axle shaft in and then just let the axle rest against our pad. Now we're gonna raise the cross member back up so we can start the press work. We're gonna raise the cross member up and we have it at the third notch down. We're gonna get our half inch steel plate up onto the top of the face of the axle. And then again, I'm gonna pull down and Sean's gonna screw the bar screw out. So here's our setup. We have the bearing driver sitting into the main tool. The main tool is being supported by the two press plates. We have the sight glass facing us. As we start to drive the inner retainer and the ABS tone ring onto the axle shaft, we can see when polished axle starts to show and then we can start taking measurements with our Allen wrench. Up above, we have our half inch steel plate that we're gonna drive against to push the parts together. Just like when we were pressing the outer retainer in position, we wanna make sure that this inner retainer is sitting nice and square on this driver. Use your hands to manipulate it to where it's sitting pretty evenly. You don't want it offset at all. You want it driving with nice contact everywhere. I'm just going to tighten the screw on the bottle jack. 
I'm gonna utilize my finger to bring the press down to the plate. Take a second look to make sure it's lined up nicely and then bring it in contact. I'm gonna utilize the bar that comes with the hydraulic jack. And now this portion of the press work is the most important. You really wanna go nice and slow and make sure that you get the proper placement of the inner retainer because this will make or break the repair. If you don't have a good mating of the inner retainer with the axle seal, you've wasted your time. At first, I can go pretty fast because we have to drive it in fairly far. So I'm a sitting here and watching this little window looking for polished axle to start showing up. There might be a little grease that gets in your way, so you want to wipe that away to make sure you can see the polished surface. Okay, now I'm starting to see some polished axles showing up. I'm going to get in there with the rag and wipe any grease away so I can see it better. Here's where you have to be really careful. Depending on how far you lift up the arm is going to determine how much drive you get with the hydraulic press. If you just need to move it a little bit, move the arm up just a little bit and then come back down to where you can make micro adjustments. So right now, if I put my five millimeter Allen wrench up there, I can see I have quite a ways to go. Just take your time and keep on remeasuring to where you get it where you want it. So if you took your time and used short strokes to make minute increments, you'll finally get it to where when you put the Allen wrench up to the face of the retainer, you're gonna see that it shows that there's five millimeters of polished axle showing below it, and that means you're done. So we're gonna release the press. We're gonna lower the screw again. And then we're gonna lower the cross member back down to the second, to the lowest position, and then pull the axle up. I can just pull the axle up now out of here. Just to confirm that we got a good placement of the inner retainer and ABS gear onto the axle, you can put it back on your workbench and you can use your five millimeter Allen and just check the gap. And it looks like we do have five millimeters of polished axle showing above the top of the retainer. The next step is to do some type of test to determine you have a good mating of the axle seal with the inner retainer. In the past, we used grease. We put grease on our fingers, we smeared it on the face of the retainer, we inserted the axle fully into the axle housing, we spun the axle shaft, and we could see where the seal pushed the grease back and that lets us know where the lip is riding. Another trick we learned is we could use a Sharpie. So we can put some Sharpie marks in different spots and where the seal pushes back the Sharpie mark, that also lets us know where the seal is writing. We determined we kind of like this technique a little bit better than the grease test because it's a little easier to see where the seal is writing on the retainer. So you can see our Sharpie mark and you could see where the seal pushed it away. It pushed it down right to this edge where the Sharpie mark starts again. So if I take a millimeter ruler up to there, that's pretty much perfect. It's got five millimeters space up above and five millimeters down below. So we pretty much have that seal riding dead center on this polished surface of the retainer. It's perfect. All right, we're all done with this job. We aren't gonna show the insertion of the axles or the pulling of the axles because we already show that in those other videos that we referenced. Sean and I can probably safely say we're experts with this job because we've done it so many times. I think this is probably the 11th or 12th time we've done a rear axle seal bearing job on a third generation Toyota 4Runner. So with that said, I think we know when we are in possession of a really functional and well-made tool. And this tool that we use today is two thumbs up. 
big time. It is a great tool. Leaps and bounds better than the other tool that we used in the other videos. The fact that it comes with the ABS puller so you don't have to resort to using a bearing splitter is awesome. You don't have to buy the bearing splitter. It saves you money. Also with the design of this tool, it allows you to just drive out one stud instead of all four studs. So it's a time saver. With the way the main tool is built, with the inner diameter bigger than the diameter of the retainer, when you slide this down over the axle so you can drive the axle out of the bearing, this design allows you to capture enough studs to where you don't have to manipulate the tool at all like I had to manipulate the old tool to make it work better or you would have to use longer bolts to make it work better. This tool, you don't have to do anything. It's ready to go. No alteration is needed. Finally, this bearing driver is awesome because it doubles as a press sleeve. The press sleeves of my kit have this little cutout and as you saw with the cutout, it enables you to see how much you need to press that inner retainer in to where you get it to the perfect spot. If you didn't have this nice little cutout, what you're forced to do is press a little bit, you have to release the press up, you have to pull the assembly up and take a look and see how much polished axle is showing. Then you got to put the press back down in position, you got to press a little bit more, pull it up, and it's really tedious. With this window, this saves you an enormous amount of time and saves you some of a workout so you don't have to keep on lifting up the assembly to see how much more you need to press. This thing saves you a ton of time. This is a well-designed and well-thought-out bearing driver. And with adapters like this that Dwayne sells on his eBay store, you can do other generation 4Runners, Tacomas, Tundras, FJ Cruisers, basically every Toyota SUV and truck that Toyota makes, Dwayne has the tools necessary to get the job done. For those of you that are wondering if this job is within your capability, absolutely it is. You just have to have the right tools. A Harbor Freight press is not that expensive. Top price is $200, but you can most likely find it on sale and use one of their coupons. You can buy Dwayne's tool on eBay, and that's not expensive either. The money you save in labor by doing this job yourself is going to pay for that Harbor Freight press and this bearing puller press kit in one job. Dealerships charge a ton of money for this job. Private shops charge a lot for this job. And if you were to pull the axles and think you're going to save a lot of money bringing them to a machine shop, even some machine shops, especially where we live in the California Bay Area, they want a ton of money to do the press work on the axles. So if you invest in these tools, definitely you can find another use for that Harbor Freight press. I've used it for many jobs, for front wheel bearings, for all the bushings on my vehicle. You can use that press for a lot of things, a very, very handy tool. As for this tool, it's pretty specific. It's meant to handle a Toyota axle bearing and seal job. You can help your friends and utilize this tool and maybe rent it out to them or maybe charge them a little money and you could get some of your money back. Or if you decide that, hey, I don't want this tool anymore, guess what you can do? You can turn around and sell it on Craigslist or eBay and get a lot of your money back. It's not wasted money. It's a very good investment. If you're going to take up the challenge, which we hope you do, we're going to put a link in the video description to this tool set that you can buy on Dwayne's eBay store. As mentioned earlier, we'll also put links to other tools we purchased for this job, like the four inch press plate, some of the snap ring pliers we used, and anything else we could think of. We'll throw that in the video description. With all that said, thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye bye. Sick mods and sick tools.